Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a phenomenal problem for you all today. Uh, this problem was on the 2015 USA Team Selection Test. So that's the test to determine which students make the IMO. And it was proposed by Evan Chen. So he was an IMO gold medalist himself. He's written in a fantastic book called uh, Euclidean Geometry and Math Olympiads. And he has a really nice YouTube channel. Um, and the, the name of the channel is V Enhance. So the letter V and the word enhance. So if you search that on uh, YouTube, I'm sure you'll find his channel. So this problem was proposed by him. Uh, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over the solution. So we have a non-isosceles triangle ABC. I is the in center and V, E, and F are the points of tangency. M is the midpoint of BC. Uh, Q is a point on the in circle such that angle AQD is 90 degrees. And P is a point on the line AI such that MD is equal to MP. And then if we suppose that Q and E lie on the same side of the line AP, and we want to show that angle PQE is 90 degrees. So the reason I like this problem so much is because it uses so many of the concepts uh, that I've discussed on my channel recently. Uh, so I don't usually like to repeat concepts too many times, but I felt like this problem, it just used so many of them all at once that I felt like I had to include it. Um, so here's my proof of it. Um, okay, so we wanna show that angle PQE is 90 degrees. Um, so first, before I do anything, um, since angle AQD is 90 degrees, uh, that means if we label this intersection point, which I'm gonna label it G, then that means that GD has to be a diameter because that means that uh, angle GQD is 90 degrees. And so uh, G, I, and D are collinear and GD is a diameter. So I'm gonna write that out. Uh, angle AQD is 90, so GD is a diameter of, uh, and I'm gonna call the in-circle omega, okay? And what I'm gonna try to do is I'm going to try to leverage uh, the, the um, fact from the, I, from the video on the IM lemma. So if you look at uh, video number 65 on my channel, uh, what we do is we draw the line through A and G and we extend it to meet side VC. So I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm drawing in this line because G, I, and D have to be collinear. And then if you let this line AQ uh, meet side BC at K, um, by my uh, video 65 on the IM lemma, we have to have DM is equal to MK. So I've used this fact, I think, probably three times in my video by now. Um, so you can imagine how useful it must be then. Okay. Um, so DM is equal to MK. All right, so that's how I'm gonna start off the problem. Um, and then also um, angle DQK has to be 90 degrees because uh, angle AQD is 90 degrees. Um, okay, so angle DQK is 90 degrees. Um, so that means that since M is the midpoint of DK um, from this step up here, um, and DQK is 90, then MK has to equal MQ has to equal MD. And from the problem statement, that also has to equal MP. So that basically means all four of those points lie on a circle centered at M. Okay, so I'm gonna write that out and I'm gonna call that circle gamma. So D, P, Q, and K, they all lie on a circle gamma centered at M, all right? And in fact, uh, DG has to be tangent to the circle at G. Um, that's pretty clear because um, angle MDG is 90 degrees. Um, so DG is tangent to the circle. All right. So we haven't yet gotten started on actually um, trying to prove that angle PQE is 90 degrees. We've sort of just laid the groundwork so far. Um, so we want to show that angle PQE is 90 degrees, 
but we know that angle AQD is 90 degrees, or in other words, angle GQD is 90 degrees. Um, so, so proving the problem, that would be the same as showing that angle PQD is equal to angle EQG, and that's going to be my approach here, okay? So angle EQG is equal to angle EDG, and also angle PQD uh, is equal to angle PDG, since DG is tangent to gamma. Uh, so we're using that fact. So I'm going to write both these out, okay? So I'm, I'm just going to repeat it. Um, sometimes repetition gives clarity. So angle PQD is angle PDG, and angle EQG is angle EDG. And we want to show that these two angles are equal because that would help solve the problem. So if we can show angle PDG is equal to angle EDG, that would solve the problem. And that's the same as saying that EP and D are collinear, okay? So if we can show that P actually lies on the segment DE, that would solve the problem. All right, so here's where it gets kind of interesting. Um, so DE, that's actually the polar of C with respect to the n-circle. So here's the part of the video where we start using facts about poles and polars. Um, so we want to show that P lies on the polar of C with respect to uh, the n-circle, uh, which we called omega. And by Lahira's theorem, that's the same as showing that C lies on the polar of P. So that's what I'm going to try to prove here. I'm going to try to prove that C lies on the polar of P. And so that means that um, in order to do that, I'm going to drop a perpendicular from C uh, to the line AP. Um, and I'm going to let it meet at a point. Um, and I'm going to hide the circle for a sec, because it turns out that that point will lie on the circle but we haven't proved it yet. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do. Um, in fact, I'm gonna let it intersect both AP and, A, and the extension of AB at a point. So I'm gonna call these points J and L. Okay, so I just dropped a perpendicular from C to the line AP and I let it meet at L. And then I let CL meet the line AB at J. And the reason why I did this is because I want to show that C lies on the polar of point P, but the definition of the polar of point P, it's a line that's perpendicular to IP, so that's why I dropped a perpendicular, but we need to show that the distance from that line to point I times the distance from P to point I is equal to the radius of the circle squared. Okay, so in other words, we have to show that PI times LI is the radius squared, and then that would prove that line CL is the polar of point P. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, we want to show that basically that, so I'll say it again, so PI times LI is equal to ID squared. Well, like I mentioned before, that circle um, gamma that passed through these points, I hit it. But if it did pass through point L, then by power of a point on I, we would have IP times IL is equal to ID squared, which would be exactly what we want. So basically, we want to show that L lies on the circle gamma. Okay, so not only do these four points lie on a circle, but we also want to show the fifth point L also lies on that same circle. So how do we do it? So my strategy here is I'm going to try to show that LM, the length of that, is equal to the length of all the other four segments, okay? And I'm gonna leverage the fact that we know that um, L, so there's a certain symmetry that I haven't talked about yet, but AP is the angle bisector of BAC. Uh, so when we dropped a perpendicular to it, uh, we created an isosceles triangle. So AJC is isosceles, and L is the midpoint of JC. Okay, 
And so L is the midpoint of JC and M is the midpoint of BC. So we have a mid segment. So ML is parallel to BJ and it's half the length. So I'm gonna use these facts here. So like I mentioned, AI is an angle bisector of BAC. So um, because of that, uh, since AL is perpendicular to, to CJ, if, um, if the angle bisector of an angle of a triangle, so we, if we take triangle AJC, the angle bisector is the same as the perpendicular um, to the opposite side, and so it has to be an isosceles triangle. So AJ is equal to AC, and JL is equal to LC, okay? But we also know that BM is equal to MC. So ML is a mid-segment of the triangle. ML is parallel to BJ, and it's equal to half of BJ. So I'm gonna write that out. So BM is equal to MC. So we know that ML is parallel to BJ, and it has to be half of it. And so I'm gonna to try to show that this amount is equal to all four of these segments, all right? So I'm gonna to try to calculate BJ. Um, and so BJ, it's equal to AJ minus AB, which is AC minus AB. So I'm gonna write this out. And now I'm gonna do a little more calculation. So AC um, can be broken up into AF plus FB, or, or I'm sorry, AC can be broken up into AE plus EC, and AB can be broken up into AF plus FB. So I'm gonna write that out. Um, so AE plus EC minus AF plus FB, but AE is equal to AF because they're both tangents to the in circle. Uh, so if you subtract these two, the AE and the AF go away, we get EC minus FB, but then EC is equal to CD or, or DC and FB is equal to BD. So this is equal to DC minus BD, okay? But we know from my video on the IM lemma that uh, BD is equal to uh, KC. So this is DC minus KC, or DC minus CK, and that's just equal to DK. Uh, so by doing a bunch of uh, fairly simple algebra, we've shown that BJ is equal to DK. Um, so if that's true, well, ML is half of BJ, so ML has to equal DM, which is a radius of the circle. So if ML is equal to a radius of that circle gamma, then L has to lie on gamma. And now we're very close to solving the problem. So I'm gonna draw the circle gamma again, passing through L. And now from there, we can prove uh, everything we, we wanted to mention before. So like I said, we wanted to show uh, that E, P, and D are collinear. Um, and uh, we wanted to do that by showing that um, P lies on the polar of C. So, or, or in other words, by Lahir's theorem, we want to show that C lies on the polar of P. And we can do that using power of a point now, because now that we know these, these, this, um, these five points lie in a circle, uh, by power of a point, IP times IL is ID squared, okay? And if that's true, then by definition of polar, um, CJ is the polar of P with respect to omega. And that's because um, clearly CJ is perpendicular to IP, so it meets the first condition. And then if we take the distance from P to I times the distance from L to I, it's equal to the radius ID squared. So LC is the polar of P with respect to omega by definition, okay? So that means that C lies on the polar of P. And so then by Lahir's theorem, P has to lie on the polar of C. And if P lies on the polar of C, um, that means that P lies on ED because the tangents from C to the in circle if we take the two points of tangency, the line connecting them is the polar. 
and I haven't, I might, I may do on a video on this very uh, near in the future, but that is a basic property of polars, okay? So P lies on ED, so we can draw in that segment. And then now that we know that, um, we want, we initially wanted to conclude, we wanted to use that um, to show that these angles were equal and we can do it now because angle PDG has to equal angle EDG. We know that now because those three points are collinear. And so that means angle PQD has to equal angle EQG. Okay, so I just wrote that out. Since PDG is EDG, then from up here, that means PQD has to equal EQG. And if we know that, um, it's, it's very easy to see from there that angle PQE has to equal 90. Um, because uh, PQE, uh, it's PQG, um, or, or it's uh, GQD, I'm sorry. So we, we start with GQD, which we know is 90 degrees, and we take away PQD, but add in EQG. But, but what we took out is the same as what we added back in. So we have GQD minus PQD plus EQG. Um, and, but what we subtract is the same as what we add. So that's just angle GQD, uh, which is 90 degrees, and that solves the problem. So this is a very fun problem, which used a lot of different concepts that I mentioned recently in my videos. Um, and of course, this wasn't the only solution. So if you're interested, check out um, my link in the description of the video where I go over, or where you can see all the other poster solutions. Uh, so if you'd like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks everyone.